Hey, this is Ben Gill from Oxenfree Design. In this video, we'll be comparing the Sony FS5 to the Sony FS7, specifically FS5's 12-bit RAW and the FS7's internal 10-bit 4K. Now, I'm going to give some context into why we did this test, but if you want to skip right to the test, I'll put a pop-up here that tells you where to jump to. For some context, nearly all the DPs that Oxenfree Design hires are FS7 owners, and in 2018, we invested in the Sony FS5 with RAW as our A-cam, and the perfect V-cam to the FS7. It was a really hard decision to make as the cameras in this price range are really competitive. We were considering the FS5, Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro, Panasonic EVO 1, the Canon C200, and even the FS7. I won't go into the pros and cons of each in this video, but we were upgrading from the Sony a7S II and the Sony a6500, so keeping the codecs and the colors the same ended up causing us to swing toward the FS5. In our research, we were amazed by how the later RAW firmware updates transformed the FS5 into a beast of a camera when used with a 4K recorder like the Atomos Shogun Inferno or the Odyssey 7Q+. For an additional $500, the RAW upgrade allows you to shoot up to 4K RAW at 120 frames per second in a 4 second burst, 4K RAW at 60, 30, and 24 frames per second continuous, and 2K RAW at 240 and 120 frames per second continuous. Not to mention that the FS5 can already internally record 10-bit 1080 at 120 or 240 frames per second in burst modes or 120 continuous with another paid upgrade. One fact that caught my eye when researching these cameras is that the $4,300 FS5 and the $7,000 FS7 share the exact same sensor. Actually, the same sensor as a lot of the Sony cinema cameras. The main difference is the codex and how the camera processes the images internally. The FS5 uses XAVC-L and the FS7 uses XAVC-I. Now, all of these cameras sharing the same sensor is so intriguing to me because of the easy to access RAW capabilities of the Sony FS5. My hypothesis and reason for creating this video is that if the two cameras have the same sensor, if you bypass the internal computing and the codex by shooting RAW, you should have the exact same image. Now, to add RAW to the FS7, you have to buy an additional $2,000 extension unit, as well as having an external recorder. Being budget conscious in my test, I'm more testing the FS5 with the RAW upgrade, a $4,800 package, versus the FS7 out of the box, shooting in its internal 4K 10-bit, which is a $7,000 package. As a disclaimer, there are a lot of reasons to pick an FS7 over the FS5. We will be mainly looking at image quality while keeping the cost in mind. However, this should be a little unfair of a contest as we'll be shooting 12-bit RAW on the FS5 and only 10-bit internal on the FS7. We should really notice it in the colors and the natural gradients from light to dark or from one color to the other. Keep in mind that 8-bit color uses 256 shades of red, green, and blue to make 16 million possible colors and 10-bit color uses 1,024 shades to create over 1 billion possible colors, while 12-bit color uses 4,096 shades to create over 68 billion colors. That's a huge jump from each, from 16 million to 1 billion to 68 billion colors. I won't guarantee that our tests are the most scientific, but we did our best to keep all the variables the same. Both the FS5 and the FS7 were on tripods right next to each other, set to S-Log3, ISO 2000, and switching the same Sigma Art 50 lens between them. We changed the aperture from 1.4 to 5.6 to change the exposure stops from 2 under to 2 over. With all that being said, here are the tests. Can the little brother to the FS7 equal or surpass its image quality while at a much lower price point? I'll have some sort of download in the description of either DNG stills or short video exports so you can compare the footage for yourselves. And here we go. Okay, first test, FS5 internal 4K 8-bit versus FS7 internal 4K 10-bit. The FS5 is here on the left and the FS7 is on the right. And the FS7 is gonna stay the same throughout these tests. Keep in mind these are all ungraded, so any exposure differences are inherent in the footage. Feel free to pause or back up if it's going by too fast. Next test, we're jumping straight into the RAW with FS5 RAW 4K DCI 12-bit versus FS7 internal 4K 10-bit. And these were graded to match to the best of our abilities. Now, 
Next, we have all the codecs of the FS5 next to the internal 4K 10-bit of the FS7. Now, these tests were before ProRes RAW came out. Otherwise, they would have been included in this test as well. All right, next we have image quality tests where we're scaling up the footage to compare sharpness and noise. All right, next we have highlight and skin tone quality test. Um, this was the biggest difference I noticed in the 12-bit was that there would be a lot more detail in the highlights and the skin tones would look a lot more natural. And the final test is side by side, and on the left is how I usually shoot out of the FS5, which is RAW, De Bayer, De ProRes in the Shogun Inferno, and on the right is the FS7 internal 4K. In conclusion, I believe my hypothesis was proven correct. It sounds obvious to say it, but when the sensors are the same, getting 12-bit raw out of that sensor beats out getting a compressed 10-bit. It's just so much more information and color from the sensor. Needless to say, the FS5 is truly the perfect B camera to the FS7, and with the raw upgrade, even gives it a run for its money. Thanks so much for watching. You can download the footage in the description below and let me know in the comments what you think of our test. I'll be uploading a lot more content in the coming months, so please subscribe if you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.